all right guys look where we're at didn't i grow a beautiful garden i've been hiding this from y'all for a good while but no um we're just down the road um also this is our neighbor just right down the road um it's called phoenix farm and uh, they called marie and said that they had some uh, lettuce that has bolted and they're getting ready to take it all out uh, they've already got four or five cuttings off of it this year so what we're going to do is take the uh, lettuce and we're going to take it down to the animals and feed it to the animals they'll absolutely love it but here in just a second i'm going to turn it over to robin and let her tell you a little bit about her gardening they they this is what she does full time um I haven't showed it yet but right here is three greenhouses um but anyway so i'm going to uh, turn it over to Robin and let her tell you a little bit about her farm. Okay, so yeah, this is Phoenix Farms. Um, it's family owned and operated. Myself, my husband, and our three kids are the main employees. I do have a couple young ladies that started part time with me this week, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, um, we'll just kind of give you a tour of what we have growing, talk a little bit about our practices, questions you have along the way, things you want to know about or what you think your viewers might want to know more about. Ask questions along the way and I'll just kind of talk through what we have in each channel, what we have out in the field, kind of what we do. Um, but before we get started, do you have like a website or? We do, we do. Um, it's phoenixfarmsok.com, okay for Oklahoma. Um, so you can get on there, you can kind of see a little bit more about uh, the farm that way, kind of how we got started. There's a link there if you're local. Um, so like Davis, Sulphur, Ardmore, Lone Grove, Southern Oklahoma, that kind of area. If you're local, um, you can order online with us. Uh, we have a weekly delivery system or weekly pickup system, depending on your location. Also, we've got uh, social media channels. We're pretty active on Facebook and Instagram. Same tag, Phoenix Farms OK. It's a blue circle of a farm with a, a barn on it. So if you're you're following, <laughs> looking for us to follow on there, that's us. Um, but yeah, that's a great way if you if your subscribers have questions or they are curious about what we do and they want to interact directly with us, that's probably the easiest way. I do have a, a information request form they can submit on the website as well. But um, all of our veggies here in our entire farm is certified naturally grown, which means we don't use any chemical pesticides or herbicides. Um, we're very particular about how we grow and why we grow what we grow. Um, long story short, we got into farming um, because we wanted to make sure we were feeding our own family and our own children the healthiest stuff around. Started with a little backyard garden and it's grown into this massive operation. It's about a, a full acre's worth of uh, growing space. Um, but we're very selective about what types of seeds we grow, what types of inputs we put on, onto our fields or into our crops, um, type of fertilizers we use, all that kind of stuff. So um, if you order from us or any other CNG certified farm, you know you're getting um, some really quality produce. So that's awesome so so if y'all have any questions or anything go to their website um they can leave you a comment they can leave comments on the email and stuff yep. um like i say it just she just ships uh local or they sell local um hopefully in the future maybe they can ship long ways out but um yeah um yeah, like we, I say, we, I've always drove up and down this road and it has got bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger every year. So uh, that's what I was talking about earlier was used to, I can remember a house over there with the uh, fence around it, had chicks running everywhere. And she just told me they was preparing a spot for the garden. So we're going to go ahead and follow her around and let her, uh, let her show you around the garden and kind of explain some of the stuff. So this is our smallest greenhouse tunnel and inside we have um, a bed of celery and then this is a dual bed of eggplant and thyme. We planted those together because the thyme kind of helps out the, um, the eggplants with pest pressure. Cucumbers, which are lovely. Uh, Aubrey is helping me trellis. She's behind you. Um, and then on this side, this is this bed of lettuce that Brandon was just talking about. Um, as you can see, it's kind of shot up straight like a Christmas tree. It's really cool looking, um, but uh, it's basically, it's growing time is done. Um, in Oklahoma in particular, growing lettuce in the summer months is really difficult because of the heat. Um, and that's what's happened here. Um, it got really warm in the tunnels. It, we've had two or three harvests off of this bed already. Um, and the lettuce went, oh, okay, it's time for me to go to seed. Um, and when that happens, um, it becomes bitter. So it's time for this to be cropped out. We'll um, 
cut all this out, send it down the road for the animals, um, and then add compost in our soil amendments and everything and plant something else here. So um, that's this tunnel. If we want to step this way. Um, this is another go around of lettuce. Um, baby greens are one of our top sellers, um, not only for our individual customers, but also for our restaurant clients as well. Um, every restaurant has lettuce on their menu for salads or what have you so we grow a lot of that um both this tunnel and the next tunnel over here the center beds have tomatoes in them and you can see um they're attached to these strings here we do something called hard pruning um, which means we prune off any excess foliage that's on the plant and we trellis them to go straight up and what that does is it trains the plant to put all of its energy into fruit production rather than growing this big bushy beautiful plant it's going to put all of that into big beautiful red tomatoes for us um, when they do reach the top we have the capacity to let down more string and it's called lower and lean and basically the plants will kind of all get shifted this way um, so it's pretty cool when you go to a big commercial greenhouse that grows like that they often will have just huge stems of tomatoes coiled around their beds at the base. Um, it's pretty neat to see. Um, because our tunnels are our most valuable space, we try and utilize as much as possible. So you can see we've got our head lettuces growing underneath the tomatoes. Um, I think what we decided this next bed, we're gonna um, under sow cilantro underneath those tomatoes as well. Um, and that kind of helps out the lettuces or baby greens as well because the tomatoes provide shade for those crops that maybe need a little bit um, less exposure to the heat in Oklahoma summer. So that's the three tunnels. One thing that's really exciting, we just got approved for two grants, um, one through the federal government and one through the Oklahoma State cost share. Um, so we're going to have two additional um, large fancy tunnels put in hopefully within the next year. The big one's going to have all the bells and whistles, louvers, fans, uh, roll-up sides, all that stuff. So that's super exciting for us. Um, it'll definitely expand our growing okay, capabilities and our space out here. So. so we're going to kind of walk through our outside bed space um, and I'm just talk about what's in each space, kind of our plan for the season and all that. Um, what we have here are we just put our potatoes in. We're super late on potatoes. but. Um, They'll still make. Uh, we had some issues with seed order, ordering and shortages, as you can imagine. What's going on in the world is also affecting farmers. Um, so certain things are just hard to come by. So those came in late, but um, potatoes are here. We've got um, garlic and shallots that we planted last winter. Those things need to overwinter and have a really cold environment to kind of set roots in. Um, so those have been there since November. Um, beets and salad mix and as you can see these beds are hideous <laughs> um one other thing that's really hard about growing in oklahoma is the weed pressure um, bermuda grass is just impossible to get rid of um, and these beds got neglected so what we're gonna have to do once these beets are ready which they're still growing just fine we'll take all those out all of this will get cut down really 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 short and we'll use something called a silage tarp to cover it um, it's a really thick plastic material um, there's one kind of wadded up over there but we use those um, when we're prepping new space and what that does is it completely blocks out any sun exposure um, and prevents the weed seed or anything growing there from continuing to grow um, so the longer you leave it on the better but we'll use that to kill off everything that's here and then after we remove the tarp we'll use this weed mat the landscape fabric as well just to ensure that there's no more no more weed growth um, this space right here is being prepped for uh, our second round of peppers we grow um, the little snacking bell peppers shishitos and uh, jalapenos those are the three varieties oh and uh, corno di toro uh, Italian fry peppers. They're really cool. They're about this long and they turn red and they look like bull's horns, hence the name. <laughs> um, so, but that's going to go here either today or tomorrow, hopefully. Um, these next few beds are ones that we're going to have to cover up with that silage tarp again. Um, they were just left exposed and the weeds took hold. Um, so, this is a bed of baby romaine that I just cut two days ago for one of our restaurant clients 
Here we've got a mixed bed of uh, green beans and radishes, um, spinach. This is our squash plot right here. I'm gonna try and find one. Oh yeah, this is a pretty one. So this is Zephyr squash. It is supposed to be tri-colored like that. Um, it's just fun and different and not something that you can buy at the grocery store here. Um, and that's one thing we do try to include in what we grow is just things that you might not be able to find at your local store. Um, but that type of squash is actually, it's almost sweet. It's very different than a traditional yellow squash. So, so is it like yellow it. and green like that? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's wow. supposed to be like that. Um, so we've got two beds of that. This next bed here has more um, green beans, radishes, turnips um large romaine which i think everything's going pretty well here i'm gonna let these go into full heads um and i can maybe do um if they get large enough before they bolt like that other bed of lettuce um i'll do large heads and if not i can sell them as like small baby uh, romaine like a trio pack of romaine um here we've got some golden beets that desperately need to be weeded <laughs> Um, this is our green zucchini right here, um, and it's pretty cool. The flowers in the mornings, I know we were just talking about this, but first thing in the morning, these beds with the squash and zucchini are just alive with bees and bugs, and it's constant buzzing out here. So <laughs> it's kind of cool to come out and see. Um, more red beets. This bed looks better than the other one. <laughs> um, and then yellow zucchini right here and then our last two beds are our broccolini which should be keep waiting on them i don't see any shoots just yet but they're just about to start putting some off and then our napa cabbages are on the last bed i might talk a little bit about the the weeds and the holes in the leaves and things like that um because we're certified naturally grown, we are limited and we choose to be certified naturally grown. And we are limited as to what we can put on our crops for pest pressure. So we try and take a preventative approach um, using things like beneficial nematodes, which I was telling um, you guys earlier that it's basically like microscopic insects that you spray through water onto your, your growing space. And what those do is they get down into the soil and disrupt the life cycle of any insect that, that grows part of its life cycle in the soil. So your beetles, your grubs, your larvae, anything like that. It kills them off and prevents them from reaching maturity. So we do that. Um, we focus a lot of our attention on um, actual soil health and building a healthy subsoil system. So um, making sure we're adding organic matter in between each bed flip, um, making sure that we are paying attention to what our soil tests tell us, that kind of stuff. Um, we do use a lot of insect netting to prevent bugs from having access to the plants until they're well established or for as long as possible. So for example, with our squash and zucchini, squash bugs are always an issue. This first go around, the plants are well established enough where they'll produce for a long time before we have to crop them out due to pest damage. But with our second go around, we will plant all of those and keep them covered under insect netting, which is just like a, a mesh netting that we fit over, kind of like a small uh, caterpillar tunnel. Um, we fit those over uh, the plants and let them grow big enough and before we take that cover off so the um, bugs don't have a chance to, to damage them before they can produce. So so there's a lot that goes on here other than just putting seeds oh, yeah. in the ground. Oh yeah, so. yeah. There, there's a lot of science that goes into it, which um, most people probably don't know. I certainly didn't. Um, and there's a lot of, um, you just, like every morning, first thing, I'm out here walking the fields looking to see, am I seeing any particular bug damage? Am I seeing any crop issues, any fungal damage, anything like that? Um, so that we can then address that immediately and prevent it from becoming a problem. So, awesome. I like the plant yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, these are wobbler heads um, and it allows us to overhead water everything for our lettuces. That's really important um, in the summer months because it helps us cool the climate right away. Like it's not actually watering the lettuce per se, it's cooling off the air around it. So it oh, doesn't wow. go to seed like that. That's pretty so. neat. Okay, so one thing that we do try and do when we're cropping out a bed, um, we don't want to disturb the soil um, because 
lots of reasons I'll get into that in a minute but um, basically we want to try and leave the root systems intact so anything below surface level we don't want to disrupt that um, the root systems all the beneficial microbial organisms and things like that in the soil we want to leave those alone as much as possible because um, that's what helps continue to improve upon the soil quality and what we have going on on the farm so we'll use I've got a few um, tools here we can use to just kind of snip right at the very base of each plant um, and then we can use our crates to take them out and put them in the truck these are awesome this is a actually a rice knife it's super sharp um, but you can whatever you're harvesting you can grab the base of it and just pull it towards you and uh, cut it that way this if you're doing any type of backyard gardening or anything like that um, I highly recommend one of these it's called a hori hori knife um, you can measure soil depth if you're planting. It's got a serrated edge. Um, it's super dirty, sorry. Um, <laughs> serrated edge for cutting. Um, it's got this little piece right here. So you can kind of nip things off if you need to. You can use it as a digging fork. You can use it to measure between plants. Um, it's, I use this on a daily basis. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Where do you get um, your... Amazon. Amazon. Yep. Okay. Yep. Same thing with the rice knife. Oh. Um, and then these, I use a ton of these. They're just Fiskars little snips. I like the smaller ones because it gives me more control within my hand. Um, so for pruning small things, this is just my go-to. But um, yeah, if you're a backyard gardener or anything like that, this tool is a must-have for sure. I will definitely leave a link yeah. in the description box so you can go click on it and go check it out for yourself. To the side. Okay. All the way down in the dirt like that. So, and if you leave stems like this, that's okay. We can deal with that later. Okay. So stems are okay, yeah. but in the soil. Yep. Yep. So. Cool. Um, and there should be. I think there's just two and lines of drip tape in here. So watch out for the drip tape. Try not to cut that. <laughs> if you do, though, it's all right. It's not the end of the world. We'll just judge you later. <laughs> Yeah, but anything like even walking on the beds, uh -huh. we try not to do. In this case, it's fine because we kind of have to, but um, we try not to because it creates compaction issues. It's a little friend, not really a friend. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's a lot of little stuff that goes into what we do to build up the soil and make sure we have a healthy crop of whatever it is that we're growing so, and everything that i know to do out here uh -huh. i learned on youtube oh. <laughs> yeah. i'm not kidding well some of it i is from reading or podcast but a lot of it trial and error yeah mm -hmm. a lot of it is but that's crazy the microbes i would have never thought mm -hmm. to leave the root system that was that yeah well um, everything gets so there's a, a series of books on the, the soil food web mm -hmm. and how like earthworms depend on certain types of things to be you know present and they create certain things in the soil that helps produce more organic matter there's all this sciencey stuff that goes into it that wow. if you don't that's pretty cool it is it's a bouquet. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and it's crazy. Stuff can bolt like this overnight. It is crazy. Yeah. Love that. All we need now is a little bit of ranch dressing. We'd be good to go. I don't know. I, I need a tomato. <laughs> What do you got there? Um, this is a greens harvester. Um, this is 
another one of our most used tools on the farm. We do a lot of uh, greens and baby greens. We clean it off before we use it for like lettuce we're actually going to sell to people. So it's not, <laughs> <laughs> you were just doing a close up and it's so dirty. But um, I figured we'd just kind of show you guys how this works. Um, harvesting a bed of lettuce like this for baby leaf would take forever doing it, doing it by hand. It hooks up to a drill. This system spins around and it's got this serrated blade here that cuts everything. And then these little ropes just spit everything back into the collection bin. So I can come across a bed. And then once that gets full, I can dump it into my harvest crate or bin or whatever I'm using and take it to the cooler. So Sweet. It's a time saver. Look it's at that. That's so sharp amazing. Too. So on this lettuce, after you cut it, it continues growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what what's the deal with the head of it? I mean, is it, so, this a different type of lettuce? Yes, okay. um, this is a a mix that's for baby leaf production. Mm -hmm. um, so like a spring mix, like what you're used to buying in the clamshells at the store. Um, that's what this type of lettuce is. The lettuces under the tomatoes mm -hmm. are made for single cut use. That's okay. just a full head. Now I could cut just leaves mm -hmm. like if i took that head of lettuce and just cut the top off and left the base with some growth uh -huh. it would continue to grow okay and there are certain varieties of lettuce um like certain salanova is one that's pretty popular with market farms you can do that with that type of lettuce but your first cut is always going to be your best okay um so for our purposes we'll do multiple cuts off of the baby leaf stuff um but the big head lettuces we just do single cuts on. Sweet, so, that's awesome. Yeah. You know. I love this knife. Yeah, and without cutting the drip tape, that's what I've told myself, I don't know how many times. A rice knife. I, yeah, I, I wanna play with the rice knife later too. <laughs> Yeah. In my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, when we started with it being a backyard garden, what we bought was just stuff that we could use, and we don't. And that's what I don't know if like their seeds would be y'all's quality or not as long as they're organic certified we can use them um one of the that's part of the cng certification mm -hmm. they want you to use all certified organic seed however if there's a variety that you want to grow that doesn't come in organics you you have the capability to use that um for example like our turnips uh-huh the type of turnips we grow, there is no organic seed option. Um, right. So what we have to do for that, and like our fairy tale eggplant are the same, I have to show that I have looked at at least three organic seed production places to source the organic right. version of it. Um, and if I can't find it after three, then I can use a, a non-conventional seed. All right, guys, poof, just like that. All the lettuce is up and it's gone and we are fixing to take it down to feed to the goats and the hogs. I think they're going to absolutely love it. Um, we've learned so much being up here at the Phoenix Farm today. Um, we're definitely going to have to come back and get some more uh, knowledge about gardening because as you see, we can't garden very well at home, but we don't have that much room neither. So um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and dump all this in the truck, take it down so we can feed it to the goats. We'll see you at the property. All right, guys, we've finally made it to the property with all the lettuce. The kids have been back here having some fun with it. Um, it's, uh, so we're going to see what animals want to eat some lettuce. We're going to give some to the, um, the hogs. And then um, we got some other things we're going to do out here as well. Um, it seems like we've always got something out, especially with the electric fence. But it's working for now. So anyways, um, let's see what they eat.
Oh, I'm on. Wait. Yeah, pop down. Help Bella get up. I'll get Help her since it's kind of diagonal. I know, that's why I wanted your dad to help you. Yeah, it is, but it's not working. She took it all, didn't she? We're going to put another T post right here. You're blocking my lettuce. I'm blocking your lettuce. Yep, my lettuce right there. Oh, yeah. They don't like that, really. That's why they haven't ate that tree yet. What tree? No, eat it. What tree is this? So we just got back from the Phoenix farm up the road. They gave us a bunch of lettuce and uh, which it was awesome cutting it out. Um, I thought it would be a little bit harder, but it was a lot easier. So now um, we're gonna bring it down here and give it to the goats and see if they enjoy the, um, the lettuce. Ah! What are you doing? When'd you get in there? <laughs> She about got me there. You got me there. I owe you now. Now you got all that dirt on you. Hop out. Come on. All right, feed them. Yeah. yeah. Is that? <laughs> See, you got to pay for it now. All right, y'all feed feed them. So, anyways, the goats are going to have some fun eating some lettuce. Here, here, get your lettuce. My eight year old. I'm pretty sure I just felt something move. I felt her baby. Okay. That's so cool. <laughs> she got me. Oh, I got the camera. Whoa, you got the camera too. Whoa, look at it. Them goats are loving it. There you go. What do y'all think about that, guys? Y'all like that stuff? So heavy. Is that lettuce good? 
You're funny. Good job. That was a bunch. Yeah, that was a whole bunch. Oh, no, not yet. All right, so let's go take care of all right, we're going to try this again. So we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We're going to go take care of the rest of the chores.